I know you're all here for her. <laughs> As the acclaimed author, painter, and art critic John Berger once said, a photograph, whilst capturing what is seen always and by its nature, refers to what is not seen. As you look at this photo behind me, you probably see a beautiful landscape. What you probably don't see is what so enraptured me that after over a year of refusing to so much as pick up my camera, I simply had to capture that moment. I hadn't just seen a picturesque landscape beautifully surrounded by a silhouette of trees. What I saw was my creative fire burning through the fog of uncertainty surrounding it and the darkness that threatened to consume it. I took that photo on the Hudson River in West Point, New York, at a warrior transition unit where I was receiving treatment for injuries I had sustained in Iraq. I had deployed at 172 pounds, earned a prestigious battlefield promotion, and had a creative spark turned into a roaring fire that had me determined to photograph something beautiful in a place where I was told no such thing would be found. However, after being told that my photos were either cliche or uninspired and then being injured, I now found myself in West Point, having lost well over 60 pounds, having lost well over 60 pounds and cast aside with other likewise mentally and physically injured soldiers where I was holding the ashes of my creative flame. It wasn't until capturing that moment that I came to understand a few truths. The first of which is that creativity is not contingent upon your sales figures or your profit margins and that it certainly does not need somebody else's outside influence or opinions to justify its existence. The next, I came to understand what photographers truly mean when they say to capture the light. They're not just talking about the light that shines through your lens. What they're talking about is the light of your subject, the very heart and soul that you're trying to capture and convey to whomever is willing to look. Finally, I came to understand that you don't need to be an artist to be or to use your creativity. Perhaps you're like my middle brother, who, as a mechanic, found a manufacturer's defect in the sports cars he tunes. When the manufacturer told him that their engineers simply couldn't solve the problem, he took it upon himself to design and fabricate a part that did. Then he offered it to that manufacturer for free because he didn't do it for the money, he did it for the creation. Or maybe you're like my father, whose job was a real estate appraiser, but whose love was found in the kitchen. We would ask him growing up, Dad, what are we having for dinner tonight? Of course, we never got a straight answer. And it's because he would have to go into the kitchen to see what we had on hand, and then his response would come back something to the effect of, well, we have a lot of chicken and rice, so I think I'll try something with that tonight. Well, obviously, this didn't always work out in our favor with his culinary experiments. <laughs> Particularly with my picky palate, I was usually the one to suffer. However, that didn't deter him. My father wouldn't allow one single dish that went awry to deter him from thinking he was a good cook. Now, if you were to ask my brother or my father, my brother would probably tell you that all he did was solve a problem for his clients and make sure they went home happy. And my father would probably tell you that all he did was cook dinner for his family. What I would tell you is that they both tapped into their creative sparks, put some fuel onto the fires, and stoked the flames of their passions. Now, I've mentioned, for, I've mentioned creativity and fire together a few times because I've come to see both of them as synonymous. While both of them may start with a simple spark, neither will turn into the roaring fires that we need to keep us warm through the dark, cold nights unless we tend to them properly. 
Now, what I hope you'll gather from me, other than just that wonderful play on words of Rhode Island's motto and our anchor, <laughs> is that each and every one of us has a creative spark inside of us. It's simply waiting for us to throw some logs on the fire and tend it to be warm enough to keep us warm through those cold nights. Admittedly, I've been slightly terrified to come up and share my story today, aside all of these wonderful people and their beautiful stories. The fact is, I don't truly feel like I belong up here, because ever since my time in Iraq, I have struggled to put wood on my own fire and to light the night that threatens my day. But it is with that in mind that I stand here before you so that you can all understand Sometimes success isn't about winning. It's simply about continuing to fight. And even though I struggle to find my spark in the darkness sometimes, I know that it is still out there waiting for me to find it in the darkness and throw some more logs on the fire. It is with that in mind that I implore all of you to find your own creative sparks and to feed the fires of your passions Take the flame that you create and use it to light whatever darkness may threaten your day. It doesn't matter if you're a mechanic, a carpenter, a cook, or a photographer, or anything else. We all know sometimes those nights get long, dark, and cold, and the fire in our heart might be the only thing that can keep us warm. So by all means, Throw some logs on your fire and find your sparks. Thank you.